I go to London. Hello. My name is Harry. I am a student of English literature. This is my story. I want to tell you about my life in London. I want to tell you about my fantastic teacher. You can read my story and learn English with me. It is a beautiful day of summers. I am traveling on a train. Two women are on the train with me. The women are sitting opposite me. They are speaking English. I don't understand much. I am studying English, but I am a beginner. I don't know many words. I begun speaking to the women. I said some words in basic English. The women understood what I wanted to say, and that made me happy. I said that I want to learn English. The women told me that they are from England. They are going home from conference. Our conversation was ten minutes long. The next station was my station. I said goodbye. The women gave me their address and phone number. They told me that I can visit them in England. Then we said goodbye. After this meeting, I worked on my English every day. I translated texts and watched films in English. In six months, my English was improved. It was good now, but I wanted to learn more. I went to London. I wanted to study English from London. When I was in London, I joined school. My first lesson was on Monday. I met my teacher and other students in the class. My teacher was a young and fine lady. She was very nice and humble. We introduced ourselves and then proceeded with the lesson. Our teacher has a question for us. She wanted to know our general knowledge about the language. Our teacher told that she can teach through a very effective method to learn English. This method was very simple. Our teacher tells us that we would not have to study. We won't have to read textbooks, but we would have to use English a lot in our daily lives. It turned out very effective for me. I did not like studying from the textbooks because they confused me. Then we spoke about what is important when we learned a new language. Our teacher told us language is a purpose and a mode for communication. We need languages to communicate. Languages help us to express ideas and thoughts. So when you learn a new language, the best method is to use the language to express our feelings and to communication with other people as well. And this is what we will do in our course. We will speak and make use of English language a lot. Many students try to remember new words. They also study grammar rules. And these students don't use English for speaking. They study about the language, but they don't use the language. There is a difference. Of course, you need to learn new words in grammar, but you don't have to study them. You need to practice them on daily basis. In this course, I wanted to show a very simple and effective method on how to learn vocabulary and grammar. I like what our teacher says. Our lesson continues. We spoke about our hobbies and what we like to do in our time. We spoke in pairs or with our teacher. I enjoy taking classes. I am really happy. This system of learning turned out to be very good and effective for me. Chapter 2 How I Learned Vocabulary I went to school on Tuesday again. One of the students asked the question, which was interesting for me. She asked, what is the best way to learn new words? Our teacher told, There are many things you can do to learn new words. I will tell you what is statistically the most effective way for learning new words. It is reading. When people read, they learn new words of their language. They learn twice as fast as people who don't read. It is good to read for at least 30 minutes every day. I want to show you what you should do if you want to get the maximum profit from reading. First, it is very important that the book or text which you read is interesting for you. It is important that you enjoy reading the book. The book can be a nice story or it can be fictional or non-fictional, whatever your interest is for the book. Don't read the text which isn't interesting for you. When you don't know many words, you can get frustrated. You always want to enjoy everything you do while using the language. It is effective to choose a text which is interesting and also okay for your level. 
When you read the text and you see a word which you don't understand, you should take a dictionary and find the word in the dictionary. Then you would look at its meaning. This will make better understanding of the text and your knowledge for the text will be increased. You won't have to write the word anywhere. The word will automatically get locked in your brain and you will always remember its meaning wherever you will see this word again. Every time when there is a new word for you, you will do the same. Reading also has another great advantage. When you read, you learn new words and you also learn how each word is connected to other words in the sentence. You can see how to link the words correctly. This way of learning new words is very effective. Try it and you will see how fast you can learn new words. Then we continue with the lesson. We speak about the situation in England and about the best jobs for students. This is good for me because I want to get a job. I want to do something in my spare time after school. I asked other students if they know that from where I can find a job. They told me that I should go to a job center. The job center offers a lot of jobs, especially for students. This is good for me. I am happy that I know from where I can find a job. When my day at school was over, I went to the job center. I did not know what job I could do, so I asked the lady at the job center, what is the best job for a student? The lady told me that they have some good jobs for students. She told me that I can be a cleaner or a waitress in a cafe. I told the lady that I have no experience with these jobs. She told me that my English is good enough to work at the cafe. The training was not difficult and I can have more chances to speak English than being a cleaner. She told me that I can start my job on Thursday. It is all good for me. I am happy that I have a job where I can practice English when you want to learn new words effectively read for 30 minutes every day. On Wednesday, I went to school again. There is one student in the class who is more quiet than the others. He is from South Korea. When our teacher asked if we had any questions for her, this student from Korea said that he has a question. He said that he has a big problem with pronunciation. He knew that his pronunciation is not very good, but you did not know how to improve it. He doesn't speak much because doesn't have others to listen to his bad pronunciation. He said that he reads and watches films in English a lot. He understands very well, but he also wants to improve speaking. He asked if there was something he could do to be better at pronunciation. When my teacher heard this, she said, Okay. I will tell you something about pronunciation and how to practice it. I will also teach you techniques which can help all of you to become better at pronunciation. First, we have to look at why students have problem with pronunciation. When we speak, we have to move our mouth. We have to use muscles in our mouth. We all do that. The problem is that when you speak English, sometimes you use your muscles the same way you would use them in your native language. Then your pronunciation is different from the pronunciation of native speakers. This happens to many students to learn English. Almost everybody has a little different pronunciation than they should have. In fact, it is not a big problem because usually people understand what you want to say, even if your pronunciation is not perfect. However, you can work on your pronunciation and make it better by a great technique which can help you a lot. The name of this technique is shadowing. The technique is very simple. When you do shadowing, you simply copy the sound which you hear. When children learn their first language, they learn it by copying. They copy after their parents again and again, and one day their pronunciation becomes perfect. If you can learn English pronunciation the same way, this is what you can do. You take some videos or audios recording, which is not very fast and which you can understand very well. You listen and you copy what you hear when you hear it. That is all. Then our teacher went to www.youtube.com and she searched for the shadowing technique. She found good videos where the shadowing technique was very well demonstrated. We watched the video. 
Then we all tried to do shadowing for about three minutes. Then our teacher told us, shadowing is also good when you are preparing for presentation in English and you want to have good pronunciation. Before the presentation, you can go to some place where you are alone and you can do shadowing for about 10 minutes. You will see how much it will help you to have better pronunciation during the presentation. This was very interesting for me. I haven't heard about this technique before. When the lesson finished, I went to the school reception. I asked the lady if there are any sport activities at school. I would like to do some sport in England. The lady at the reception says, Yes, we have a table tennis team and a football team. The football team has training today at 5 o'clock. I was very happy because sport is very important in my life. I went to the training of the football team. I met a lot of players from different countries. The players are from Brazil, Japan, Russia, Spain, Argentina, and Italy. I liked the training. I was very happy that my time in England started well. I have a great teacher. I also have some new friends from my football team. Also, tomorrow I am starting my job as well. When you want to have a good pronunciation, repeat after native speakers. On Thursday, I went to school again. We had new student in our class. Her name is Elizabeth and she is from Italy. At the beginning of the lesson, my teacher asked Elizabeth some questions. My teacher knows Elizabeth because Elizabeth visited her class one year ago. It was a class for beginners and it was only for two weeks during summer holiday. When Elizabeth speaks, she speaks beautifully. Her pronunciation is very good and she is fluent. My teacher was very happy and she told Elizabeth, Your school in Italy must be very good. Elizabeth says, I don't go to any school. I learn English at home. I use techniques that I learn from you. I do a lot of reading, shadowing and thinking aloud. I try to think more in English than in Italian. This is how I work on my English. The two weeks which I spent last summer at your class helped me a lot. You showed me the way. I know how to work on my English every day. This is why I wanted to join your class again, because one year ago I was a beginner, and now I can speak English. I want to learn from you again. My teacher was very happy when she heard these words. She appreciated Elizabeth for her hard work. It is all very interesting for me. I already know about reading. I also know the shadowing technique. But Elizabeth also speaks about thinking aloud. I don't know what it is. So, I asked our teacher, what is thinking aloud? Our teacher replied, it is a very effective technique. You have to have a strong motivation to learn English if you want to have benefits from this technique. It is also good to know that for some people this technique is a little crazy. But when you start to think aloud your English can be better very fast. I said, I have a strong motivation. I don't care if the technique is crazy. If it helps, I want to learn it. Can you teach us this technique? Okay, it is actually very simple. You think in your native language all day every time. It is normal. Now you can start to think in English. And when you start to think in English, then you can think aloud. You simply say aloud what you think. It is all. I say, it is very simple. Why is it very effective? Our teacher says, maybe you can ask Elizabeth. She uses this technique. Maybe she can tell you more about this technique. Then our teacher asked Elizabeth if it is okay for her to speak about experience with thinking aloud. It is not a problem for Elizabeth. She said, when I started with this technique, it wasn't easy. I started with very simple sentences. For example, I am can speak English. It is good that I can speak English. I want to be better. I need to practice every day. I don't know many words. But I can use these words. I can say my ideas with these words. I can do this. This is great. The sentences were really simple. But at the beginning, there was one problem. My thinking in Italian was long and complicated. 
I was not able to say in English exactly, but I said in Italian. I needed to find a simpler form for English. To think in simple English was the hardest part. But after some time, it was normal for me to think in English. Then something interesting happened. I met a man from Australia. He was on holiday in Italy. I was still a beginner, but we started to speak English. I could see that. I was able to speak with him without having problems. My sentences were simple and short, but I was able to speak. I didn't translate in my head from Italian to English. After the meeting with a man from Australia, I started to use thinking aloud more. This technique helped me a lot with my speaking. I still use it every day. It is really a very effective technique. Our teacher thanked Elizabeth for her experience with thinking aloud. I wanted to use this technique because Elle also wanted to get better at speaking. When you want to speak English fluently, think aloud. I want to give you extra advice. When you want to learn English, read, listen, think, and speak. Do each activity for 40 minutes every day. You can read. Listen and shadow hearing our basic English stories.